All right. Well, uh, back here in New York City, uh, always love coming in to this city because random things happen and you always have to keep a little buffer in your schedule for those random things. One of those random things, uh, Tony and I were actually in the same city for once. I think last time you were here, I was like a day behind you going from Arizona to here to you know yeah, back was, to Florida. Yeah. I was following him and, and his girlfriend, you know, not deliberately. I'm not a stalker, but um, yeah, we finally, the timing works. So thank you, Tony, uh, for being on the podcast. Great to finally meet up here in uh, wonderful New York City. Well, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's cool that this is how we're meeting up for the first time. Yeah, exactly. It's like so this, this, is, this is a this is a story. It's alone. like it's like when you go. It's like insta stalking people, right? You go and you feel like you know these people. That you, like you're chatting and everything else, even voice messages, and then right. you actually meet in person. It's crazy right. in today's world. Very cool, very cool. But I'm glad that uh, I'm very grateful for this. So just to, just to hang out, yeah, yeah, and chat. have, have some very fun. Cool. No, definitely, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so why don't you, we take a step back. I know you're from born and raised Miami, Florida, uh, kind of a, give us, you know, your story as to where, you know, where you started and where, where you've come to today and kind of the stuff that you're into. Okay. Well, yep. Born and raised in Miami. Um, I'm, I'm currently a writer, right? A fitness writer. So I got into the fitness industry, played sports my entire life and, uh, opened, opened a gym you know, was a professional trainer for years, which then kind of, uh, <clears throat> kind of basically gave me the, you know, the platform or the, the opportunity to write for a bunch of public publications. So okay. from there, I was just uh, I've been writing, and then after I left the gym that I had, I uh, just moved on to different opportunities, such such as the digital media and influencing yeah. etc so okay no that's fun so you know when you look at writing uh especially around fitness you know how do you how we I always take like what people say with a grain of salt it's like who's qualified who's not i mean right. obviously if you look on your instagram you seem like you're in pretty good shape <laughs> <You're> pretty <laughs> shredded I, I try to be <laughs> <laughs> so obviously whatever the hell you do it works right <laughs> but um yeah like how do you how do you take that you know, jump forward. Were you always into writing and your know, fitness was just a passion or, you know, what kind of, well, I was always into athletics, which turned to fitness. So I played sports all the way into college. And then it just kind of naturally progressed where, uh, friends of family would say, Hey, my son's got the season coming up. Can you train him? Uh, you know, so I started training lacrosse players, soccer players, and I was just you know, using the knowledge that I learned when I was younger yeah. and um, I figured out there that I loved it, yeah. right? It was before it was like cool. Yeah, yeah. Right? And no one was like a trainer at yeah. that time. But like <laughs> it was almost, in all honesty, was kind of looked down at in, yeah. a, in a way, you know? So, um, so yeah, so I just did it because, because of the love for it and because of people that I, that I was friends with and then friends with the family. I wanted to see them do Succeed, well at their yeah. the sport or, you know, um, from there, someone offered me a job and, and I was reluctant because yeah. again, like I said, I went, I went to school for business. So I was like a, a, a trainer, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, to yeah. me, there I looked like at, a stigma that was to it. Like right. you, even you looked down on it. Right. See, exactly. It. And I loved it so much. And, yeah. and I looked up to my trainers, which were my coaches at the time, you know, weight coach or whatever, strength coach. And um, so, I, so since that door kind of opened, I just was doing it like for a free membership. Right. And I guess I, I realized that I, there was some talent. It's, it's from the pedigree and from the experience of being coached for so long. And uh, I guess being an older brother or, or a leader, right. being a, a captain on the team, you're a leader. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. I started teaching classes. I started, you know, uh, taking on different types of athletes from anyone you could think of to professional athletes, to moms, you know, soccer yeah. moms. And I loved it. I just loved watching people become better versions of themselves. So I, I just dove into it. I just started taking as many seminars as possible, taking other people's classes, you know, um, 14, 15 certifications later, eight, nine years later, um, I decided to open a gym. So I basically in all, 
in all avenues that you can have or take or in the fitness world, I've pretty much done it to the modeling stuff, to yeah. the commercials, to the, you know. So from that, the opportunity presented itself where major publications, I, you know, I don't need to list them, but started approaching me say, hey, we- shameless plug, what are some of them? Like, what are, oh, some like, of uh, you're, you know, like men's health, women's health, uh, live strong, yeah, NBC major, News, ABC. major publications. Yeah, just, I mean, <laughs> NBC, an ABC, in of itself. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, stuff like kudos. that. Yeah, so I I had all this information. Once I kind of left, uh, I ended up leaving the gym that I owned with a fallout with my partner. I had all this information yeah. that I wasn't. It's like bottled up. In yeah, your it's head. just like it's if it wasn't useless, but it was just there. Like <laughs> yeah. you know, I was used to teaching and giving it all yeah. all all the time. So when that presented itself it was it was awesome to me to be able to unload all this all this information and yeah. and it's 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 uh, it's gone well and opened up other doors as well well so you know it, you it seems as though that was sort of your release for your passion you know? yeah and you know like where some people you go to the gym to you know have an outlet or a release you know you it being your job obviously sometimes that probably isn't your your release and you need Correct. something creatively as an outlet and so you're then going to push that out via, you know, writing and sharing your knowledge to hopefully inevitably help people Correct. You know, know what you know. Now, don't you, is, is there like a, when you look at it, because, you know, if you're a trainer, you own a gym, like you're either be charging to be trained, you know, for you to train or you're hoping to have a membership and then you're, you know, it's your business, your, <clears throat> your sort of gym. You know, when you're giving out this information for free, you know, does it like, you know, most people in today's world want to like charge you for everything. So, right. you know, when you're giving it out for free, isn't that kind of your secret sauce or your eight, nine years of accumulated knowledge or your 14, 15 certifications right. and or degrees like on top of that? I don't feel that way. Um, I love to just to give it out. You know, I love uh, if, if someone truly wants to know. Yeah. And they not, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will say, hey, I want to get fit or I want to lose some weight. I mean, just talk is talk, you know, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. when you really find a person that is going to be a sponge and actually going to listen to you and trust in you. Yeah. For me, it's, that's one of the greatest things. Yeah, it's the most could, rewarding. Yeah. Thing. I love yeah. it so much, you yeah. know, like, and I love, like I said, I love to watch people change. I used to call myself a confidence coach. Yeah. So that, that's my, yeah, I'm going to get, oh, I want abs. Like, that's cool. You yeah. know? Hey, you know, how much weight can I lose in two months? Yeah. Like, okay, no, yeah. we're changing your life right now. Yeah. We're going to make, make you better at whatever it is you all, you know, you do. Um, circling back around to the, you know, put a price tag on everything. I mean, it's, it's opened so many doors for me, yeah. right? It's, it's started so many things for me. I mean, no, to, to me, I, I, I love to give out information. I love to teach and there's, it, it's endless. Yeah. So <laughs> if I help someone become better and become a trainer and, and they become competition, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think of things of that, you know, I, I don't think of another trainer as competition. Yeah. Uh, maybe in other fields I have some competition, but not in the training field. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 it makes sense. That's I mean, my you're, space. You're giving it out just kind of, you know, for you, you're paying it forward knowing that, you know, somehow you're either helping somebody and you get nothing really in return outside yeah. of knowing that you help them, which is incredibly, yeah, which is know, worth it. You know, humbling, alone. great. You know, yeah. it's a like very, very rewarding. Uh, or, you know, somebody else does something and they open another door. It's like, Hey, you need to do that. Then I've got a buddy that does this. Thank you for your help. You've always been so kind and generous to me. They always feel like maybe they feel like they owe you to kind of open that door or connection or introduction or whatever that may be. Right. I mean, for me, the most important thing is relationships. Um, training alone has opened up door after door after door just because I interact with people. Yeah. And a lot of them eventually were affluent, yeah. you know, because it's not cheap to have a trainer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, from, I took it as a, as a learning experience. I learned how to talk to different types of people. Right. I learned how I learned about different fields and, um, I made huge connections that, you know, bared fruit later on in yeah, my life. Yeah, yeah. So when you're getting into other ventures, exactly, sort of exactly. It's it's crazy if I sit back and I do the the roadmap, how I got to 
you know, this investor or how I got to this, you know, whatever, this yeah, huge yeah. connection at the publication. Well, it's crazy so like when so you forth. use, like when you use your, within your field. So everybody's like, oh, well, you know, how did you end up in this industry? And, and sometimes it, it's rooted in your passion and it could be anything from being a yoga instructor or being a fitness expert or even working at like McDonald's or even being a server at a restaurant, whatever that ends up being. It's like, you're, you, maybe that's what you're really passionate about and you like it. And then you meet Tommy. Tommy happens to be this huge investor that, you know, is in, you know, I don't know, tra has this huge travel company. Then Tommy, Tommy has this huge travel company. And one day you're talking to him and he's like, you know what? I'm looking for somebody to help kind of help me out and expand my business. And then all of a sudden, because they've known you or that you've built a rapport with them, you're the guy that they choose, you know, ahead of any applicants when they post a job online or those sort of things. Or you're looking for investment and they're like, oh, I actually know them, call. They've known you because you've trained them for five years in a row and you've helped them have their confidence change their life to where they're like, all right, well, I trust my body with this guy. Right. Why the hell would I not trust, I trust know, this guy? Bucks? Right. Yeah. Everything he said was true. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So if he comes to me and, you know, from experience, this is a true story of having multiple times, I, I've approached people and been like, hey, listen, I have this project. You know, we're looking for some some funds. We're looking yeah. for someone to back us. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah. You know, put it in my face. Yeah. So then, when I realized that, yeah. you know, that opened up the world for me. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I try to give advice to. I mentor. I'm an older brother, and I mentor a lot of people, and um, I'll, I always say, take everything, right? Like, if there's an opportunity, if it can't, if it popped up in your face there's a reason why yeah take that opportunity run through that door yeah do it to the best of your ability you could hate it yeah it's gonna it's gonna end up leading to something better yeah, every there'll single be time some, you get something out of it like even yeah. if it seems miserable at the time like there's going to be a connection or something that you learn that's going to be valuable to help another business grow that you have or whatever it may be Correct. I, I totally believe uh in that but a lot of people they run at the first sign of adversity and they don't want to you know, right. keep like chugging along or keep their head down and keep moving forward. Right. I, Cause they're not making a million dollars yesterday. You know, I'm this here is for this two days. Where's my million bucks. To, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, it's kind of like working out. <laughs> it's like, definitely. I went to the gym for a week. Where's my where six pack? I, yeah. Bro? Where are my ass? <laughs> yeah, where, exactly. Why are my biceps <laughs> three times? Your abs are with that fucking whopper, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I definitely believe in that. And I, I sometimes I think about if I was talking to my younger self, yeah. and what would I tell, tell him? And first yeah. off, I'd probably be like, yo, this guy's super cool. But <laughs> yeah. Jury's uh, still out on that, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my kidding, younger kidding, self kidding, probably, kidding, probably yeah, like kidding, me. Kidding, kidding. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think that. I think about what, what did I need when I was younger? I know yeah. it sounds cliche. We've heard it before, but... I try to be that person and I like to mentor people. What I like would be, to reach what out would to be like two things you would tell your younger self. Like <laughs> now, if you fast forward to where you're at today and going back, like it could be that terrible breakup, like the, you know, situation you thought was never going to end or the worst thing ever, or the opportunity maybe you missed. Like what, what, what would be like a couple of things that you would tell your younger self? I think the first thing I would say is just stay calm, be cool no matter what the situation is, even if it's positive or negative, if it's a huge event that like all, all of a sudden you have this opportunity or the world came crumbling down on your head, it yeah. will pass, right? Like you're going to learn from it. Something's going to come from it both ways. Yeah. And um, I always felt like I was out of time when I was younger. Yeah. I was always in a rush. Like the clock was going to run out. Yeah. You know, like, like, like you have your whole life ahead of you. So yeah. Enjoy it. I, it's hard to see that far no, sometimes, especially as a, as a, a young kid. man, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a kid. But yeah, that would definitely be the stay calm. It's you, you've got time. Things yeah. are, it's going to pan out. Yeah. So being able to stay calm in every situation, I think would be one of the things I would say to myself. And then the other would be be more of yourself. So I, I found myself in the in my mid twenties, say, yeah. worrying about if I shine, if I'm gonna hurt someone's feelings, or yeah. if 
if I act confident, is yeah, it going to be arrogant? Or I'm being arrogant, like right? That, you know, like whatever it is. Exactly. Once I found felt comfortable with my skin enough that I was like, just be you. I'm going to be me, and I'm not really going to apologize <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's a it's a it's a freeing feeling. Yeah. And. But when did that, when did that like, I mean, I think that that's critical because, you know, we're all, we all lived through various levels of insecurity, especially as you're growing up, right? And you're like, should I do this? Should I not? Uh, are other people going to like that? Is this not cool? Is it cool? I mean, there's a vanity piece to everything. Like, do I look good? Do I not? Am I shredded? Am I not? You know, like all this stuff. Like when, is, is there like a time where you were, you actually felt like liberated to where, because I, I do think that there's. And not everybody gets there behind you. So dude, I do think that there's something to where you reach this point and it's like this point of not giving a fuck, but yes. you give a, it's not like to say like, I don't give a fuck about people and I'm just an asshole. It's not like that. It's like, you just don't, you're like, I'm me. Like, I'm not going to be malicious or a bad person. And I don't wish that upon anybody else, but I'm also not going to apologize because I go to the gym every day and I eat healthy and I have a six pack. I'm also not going to apologize that I work 18 hours a day and I make a lot of money. I'm also not going to apologize that because I make a lot of money, because I work my ass off that I bought a Ferrari or here or a Correct. big house or I go on vacations, like Correct. whatever it is. It's like, I don't have to feel guilty because I'm putting in the work behind the scenes Correct. that nobody else is seeing. Like, was there a time when you finally just said like, I'm not, I'm not going to, like you felt free, like you felt unchained, like somebody uncuffed you. It's, I've had multiple times uh, throughout my life that I felt that way. And then I found myself struggling with it again. Yeah. And then freeing myself again. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost like you have to remind yourself. It's like it's it's like anything else you can teach yourself. Yeah. You have to remind yourself that it's okay to be you. Yeah. It's okay to be nothing like the people around you. And if you're excelling past them, do your do what you can to help them. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, always. but you can't hit can't the brakes. Stay behind. No. Yeah, you can't stay behind. No. Trying to. Yeah. S- so, I mean, pivotal moments. I mean, there was, there's been multiple different ones, but. Anything that like sticks out in your head. Okay. So I had received an ambassadorship from Lululemon. Yeah. And for me, that was a big deal, right? Like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of a small company. Nobody's ever heard of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah massive. It's Lululemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when they when i first heard that they were approaching me i was like what like i was very confused about it yeah cuz have you seen my instagram like it's me just doing fitness stuff to like future yeah. like yeah, you yeah. know like with like very confident borderline arrogant Captions, <laughs> and I'm like, this is this hovering on the line. It's of like arrogance. really, yeah, it's like right there, toggling between. Me. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I, you know, so I'm like, yeah. Have you seen my? You know, they're yeah. like, yeah, they love it. Yeah, I was blown away. It's probably because it was authentic. <laughs> Whatever it was, I mean, somebody liked it, and yeah. and and it panned out and worked. Um, but when this was going on, I had uh people close to me saying hey you need to pull some of this back yeah you got lululemon looking at you you got this you got that going on as if there's not a like whole track record online of you know uh, borderline arrogant r- comments you know just scroll down it's totally different <laughs> like just today scroll to change down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like let me scroll down yep yep, yep. another there. asshole the couch yep. and here yep. he is okay here he goes yeah N- not replying to anyone's <laughs> nice <laughs> comment you know like yeah yeah that's right tell me i'll get yeah anyways um yeah, so so I, f- I felt like I was being held back a little bit, right. and then I felt like I had to. Yeah. And it, it just took a little bit of time for me to understand that, you know, you know they, they approach me because of me, because yeah. of who I am, yeah. and not because of who they want me to become. Yeah. And, and you know, I kind of put it on a, like as a chip on my shoulder for a little bit, and I use that and, and I started being me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And almost being like to internally to to uh, can we curse? Internally yeah, you can to curse. 
you can cuss. I, I think yeah, I'm, I was, I'm like, like internally, I'm five like five or six f bombs at this point. So <laughs> add to it. Who fucking cares? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can curse. It doesn't matter. All right, cool. Be you. Um, yeah, you so, don't have to filter. I don't want you to be something you're not. Perfect. <laughs> Put right on sub, on topic. Exactly. It'll be off brand anyway. <laughs> so yeah, so in my in, inside this chip I was carrying, I was kind of like. You know those people that were telling me to hold it back? Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. And I would, and it would, it brought me out more. Yeah. It fueled my fire, and then I got better response from it. And honestly, I started connecting with a, with a lot of, say, younger guys that that didn't have confidence. Yeah. And and that's why I started when I started getting feedback from it. That's why I started doing it more. I was like, I, I want to. Help other people I want to help, as well. Yeah, show people that you can be confident. You can do that thing you you've always wanted to do, and and uh, how you want to do it. Yeah. And now it's just the the more feedback I get, and the more people I interact with and touch, and I'm, I'm so blessed for it. It pushes me more to 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 keep. Yeah. Yeah. To keep keep on keep on doing. So me. you know, I think you mentioned something earlier, and it even ties to what you just said. Is like helping people have confidence. So you know, I know the vanity component of fitness. You know, and I'm sure when clients or people reach out to you, is I want to lose weight. I want a six pack. I want my butt to look like this. I want bigger arms. I want you know, like whatever. I hate my legs. I hate, you know, like whatever it ends up being. There's a vanity component to it. And you know, I'll tie it together after I hear your answer yeah. to like where something I got from my wife. But there's, uh, you know, what do you like? You you mentioned that it's helping people build confidence, which is like the what is really going on that outwardly helps people be more confident to go have you know to to go have conversations or difficult conversations at work, or to feel more confident about themselves with their partner, or to go and be more of an extrovert and talk to people they don't know, you know, like all of these sort of things or, or to like take the leap professionally, you know, because you have more confidence in yourself when everybody's doubting you, you know, those sort of things. Like, what do you, what have you seen as, you know, the backstory as to what really happens? Because what everybody is focused on, especially in today's like, you know, kind of vain world as you go and not that vanity hasn't always exist, but it's just in your face. It's like, everybody's perfect. Look Everything, everything's, like, everything's in your like face this. at it's this like, point. Yeah. It's like that, you know? And so it's kind of, you know, what, it, what do you see behind when you, what, with what you do and as far as helping people build confidence and really the impact that that has, you know, because I think that that's more far reaching and empower, like powerful than having a six pack, you know, and it may be the six pack, but everybody has their insecurity, right? Yeah. I mean, when I hear that, when someone approaches me and says something like that, I, I hear, Hey, help me become a better person. Yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah. The moment they, they might not know that's what they're saying to me. Yeah. But that's exactly what they're saying to me. And just the fact that they're going to approach me, take that first step to have the conversation. Something's telling them inside. Yeah, I need there's to a change. vulnerability there that they've, they've already like the hurdle of vulnerability that they've already had that you essentially, I mean, you're very much cognizant of that fact. Like you came to me, which means you've identified with yourself and have the confidence to finally go to an expert such as yourself on, you know, how to better try themselves. and remedy that or right. benefit, you know, better themselves. Right. So what you have to go through to change, to get to that goal. Yeah. And if you're training with me, the the physical things you have to climb, like the pa- like the pain thresholds <laughs> yeah, that you go literally. through, <laughs> yeah. it, te- it, it teaches you so much, and um, the discipline and 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 the mental toughness and the dealing with me, I'm in your face, you yeah. know, like you, when you go to work on Monday, yeah. And something happens and someone, you know, Nancy's freaking out because something's late. And yeah. you're going to be like, look, I got through that workout that I almost died and yeah. threw up. This is not as bad. And it, it translates to every aspect of your life. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when I hear someone talk about vanity, I just I really hear them saying, help me change. Yeah. Help me be become better. And um I'm like, yeah, 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 six pack. Come this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring it on. I got yeah, you. Yeah. I got Two, you. How many months do you want it done? Three months? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. You know? So but, what, it, what does it take to, 
you know, you mentioned goals and, and you know, you've, you're mentioning some of the stuff that translates. Like, you know, the toughest part of your day was in the morning before you went in to go train. So you're like, everything's easier from like, how much tougher can it be from right. here? Right. But what are, what are some of the things, you know, like consistency, you know, there's obviously you have to, you, you have to mentally want to do this because fitness, like going to the gym and training with you, if they come to you and train and they eat like garbage, like they're not going to see the results anyways. And it, there is like a consistency behind it. Like you can't go for one week and take two weeks off then come back and see Correct. probably the results that most people want. Correct. I mean, I preach the, you brush your teeth, you go to work, you eat, you sleep. These are normal things that you do yeah. rut routinely. This needs to be categorized or put in that, you know, in that like context or whatever, yeah. this needs to be like something that is normal, something yeah. that you do all the time, regularly. Yeah, and that's the that's the mentality that needs to be taken when when uh, when you decide to just become a fit, healthy person. It's not about I just want to get to this goal. No, it's it, it's about this is just what I'm doing from now on. Yeah, this is just part of my life. I mean, you can get, you get yourself to you can get yourself to a spot where that's what you like to do, yeah. right? There's people that fall in love with it. Yeah. So when my girlfriend and I travel, we work out. Yeah. Like we like it. We're yeah, like, yeah. this is, it's our, our time. It's something that we enjoy doing. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, it, it's introducing someone to something they don't, they don't know that they, they like yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, that's fine. So um, when it comes to accomplishing this goal of being fit and re or becoming better or becoming stronger. Everyone has different goals. But as you said, consistency is key. Perspective and mentality is huge. So it's just about changing how you look at things. Like sometimes I tell athletes, it's like, you're not eating for it to taste good. Yeah. You're eating because it's fuel. Or you need to realize this fuel. is fuel. This isn't uh, something for us to sit down and like social eat, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It's not to spark a conversation or to get out of the house. Think of it like, I need these calories. Yeah. I need, you know, that's when someone's really taking it serious, yeah. obviously. But all it takes is that quick little mental shift. Yeah, and you, you, it's almost like you trick your brain or you retrain your brain yes. to look at things differently. Yes, you hack yourself, even if yeah. it's not the truth. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah you got it. If you got, it's if like you if got you're your hungry mind. enough, chicken and broccoli, it would be good, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, right. to be honest with you. Or you play this mental game where there is nothing but chick chicken and yeah. broccoli, and it's like, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, right? this is all I have. Right. You know, I don't want to die hungry and, and you I need could, energy. You could always change your, t you know, your taste palette by, by doing this. I mean, you never know, just like we s circling around, just like you don't know what's going to come out of a certain opportunity. Yeah. Um, changing your eating pattern might just completely change everything. I mean, yeah. you, it could change what you, what you actually like and what you crave and yeah. so on and so forth. So when you're looking at, you know, when you, when you're looking at how fitness has changed within and, and you know, and people are leveraging it within social media. Yeah. How have you seen, I mean, you're, you're very active on social media. Uh, your girlfriend's so, very active on social media. So we met, right? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So how have you seen this transformation uh, and what's your kind of viewpoint on it? Is it positive, negative, you know, and how, how, how are people or how can people leverage it? So platforms, I mean, there's negative and positive to all of them, right? If you look at politics, you're going to get negative and positive, right. you know, um, so on and so forth. So when it came to fitness, at first it was such an opportunity. Yeah. In my my eyes, I was, just, wow, like I could show everyone more of what I know. This is amazing, and and it was an opportunity for me to to uh, get sponsorships and ambassadorships. Um. But I found myself getting upset about that cheesy trainer yeah, yeah, on yeah. Instagram with 1.5 mil yeah, followers yeah. that was just like, do my transition program and everything's going to be you yeah, know, yeah, great yeah. or swipe up to get my transition program. Right. Which I'm not hating on that either. No, I no, mean, no. but do you? Yeah, go for it. But you know, or people not people doing movements that weren't technically sound. 
Yeah, it got to me for a little bit. It bothered yeah. me. Like when everybody wanted also I people I trained became trainers and which you know, don't get upset when you build a bridge and someone walks over it, yeah, right? Yeah. And I, I find my, I had to come to that crossroads. Like yeah. I had to be like, Wow, I uh birthed forty five percent of the trainers in Miami. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then I realized like, no, that's that's actually a cool thing. Yeah. You know, that's like but yeah, it, it's gotten to me when I see people that aren't um, well, educated out, enough yeah, they're, for they're spitting out bullshit that's correct. just false, and then people are buying it. And correct. You're like, this is, I mean, it, it, it actually, it's not because you need it. You're just like, dude, you're these people are gobbling up this BS, and you know they're either going to get injured, they're not going to see results, right? You know, not going to eat the right stuff, damage right. their body, or whatever. You know, whatever that may be, right. which is probably, I think, what it's rooted within. Right, you see the frauds, right? And yeah. at the end of the day, I think the truth always yeah, surfaces right. yeah. eventually. So once, just like any other, just like some of the other freeing moments in my life, like yeah. when I learned to just let it go and not lower myself to worry about what other trainers or people that I felt didn't have the right credis, uh, credibility or credentials to do what I was doing. Yeah. Once I just let it go and say, everyone's going to do their own thing. People are going to try to take an advantage. They're going to try to play a role. And yeah. we see it in so many different aspects I mean, of life. It's all over. I mean, yeah. Like finance here. They, it doesn't matter. It doesn't People matter. Especially social. You know, yeah. They can. They're like, Oh, this is a, you know, this is a trend. Let me jump on it and say, I do this now. Yeah. Which, Hey, it's, it's worked for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. But, um, yeah, it doesn't ever, it really doesn't, it really doesn't bother me because, I'm comfortable with me, right? Yeah, and we're yeah. back to being what we spoke to earlier about being you. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so when, is that how yeah. you're building kind of your brand around it? And, you know, the way that you're approaching it is just being authentic to yourself first. And yes. Then, you know, where that leads. Yes. You, know, you just kind of are amenable to the doors that open and, avail, you know, willing to walk through as they, they open and see where it goes. That's how all this happened, right? That's how, that's why we're sitting next yeah, to each other. Yeah, that's true. We met on social media. Right. <laughs> I mean, and then I found myself when other opportunities like started coming to fruition, I was like, no, you're only fitness, you're only fitness. Yeah. And then someone's like, hey, do you want to work with this fashion brand? I was like, I really like fat, you know, Yeah, I like. Fat. let me just test it. But again, there was that, that thing in my brain that was tugging at me when you can yeah. learn to let that go. Yeah. And you're like, don't typecast yourself. Yeah. Don't put yourself <laughs> like I'm more than just, yeah, trainer, you know, just a trainer. Right? Yeah. That's another thing that stigma online where these trainers are like, oh, one cheat meal. Like, don't say that to people. You know, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you need to live your life. Yeah. Right. There's a way for you to find this balance where you can live your life enjoy things and still be fit and healthy and together. Yeah. So that's why I started posting things that they go against the grain. Yeah. I started posting cigars and because I grew up <laughs> yeah. my entire life. I actually, I'm like, man, this dude loves a cigar. You I know, love cause him. I love, I love like smoking shisha. So I don't even know. I just like it. It's like very common to me. And it's actually something where, you know, if you come like to Vegas, I go have meetings there now because everyone goes and have a drink. People go like, oh, I'm smoking a shisha, a hookah, you know, like whatever. Yeah. And then they come and they like relax. I've closed so many deals, like just yes. smoking shisha and people are like, what is this thing? And you, know, you go there and it's a, you know, but it's the same thing, but then you just like screw it. To, yeah. I mean, I got, you know, and I got some back, like, yeah. I guess backlash or questions and yeah. people were like, oh, I thought you weren't in the fitness industry yeah, anymore. Like a temple. No, like, I'm enjoying myself yeah, and I'm taking a, a second to, to relax and have a conversation. Yeah. And that's, that's how that's I was okay. brought up doing it yeah, or, yeah. or celebrating a, a something important. Yeah. You know, my father's Cuban since I was a little kid, we've been smoking cigars. Yeah. It doesn't have, have to you be been a back to Cuba, by the way. I have. What is I that? Have. I haven't been there yet. I mean, it, it look, I mean, I know the challenges oh, on the back end, like all yes, that stuff, yes. but I mean the, you know, from a tur tourist standpoint, you know, it seems amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, but you know, I'm here, you know, getting to see where I came from, yeah. right? So for Were me, it was like, there? my father was. Okay, okay. So my entire Cuban family is in Miami, that everyone's, yeah. for the most part. So, and living in Miami, you get kind of engulfed in that culture. Yeah. 
so to go back and to really see it and yeah. really experience it yeah it blew my mind i mean obviously travel is very important to me yeah, yeah. and um yeah you have to go okay <laughs> i'm going back I'll just go back with you yeah let's do that it seems like the way to do let's it do just it. go with you yeah that'd definitely. be great i mean yeah I, I, some people i've heard negative feedback from people and i'm just like you, what are you going for? Like, yeah. you, you, I don't ever understand. I mean, it's, people just like to complain. I'm oh, like, I get tired of the, the BS. I'm like, dude, just fucking stay at home then. Like, yeah. Stay out of my world. Watch, we don't see here negativity. Watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly, like, yeah, exactly. Go binge. Like, yeah. I'm going to go travel and I want... Where, where's been kind of one of your favorite places you've traveled so far? Oof. Rome. Rome really was incredible. Uh, Cuba's on there. Paris, um, I I don't know. I yeah. It's, it's every experience better, is so better. different. Yeah, everyone's right? different. You want to go back? Yeah, everyone's different. I you know, there's a bunch of places I love to re want to revisit, and there's obviously a long list of places I need to go yeah, to. Yeah, of course. But we try to make a a decent so effort to so travel. So you mentioned we there. So you met your girlfriend on social media. You said no. Or wh how did you meet? Um. So I had. I had started a gym in Miami, okay. in Burkle in Miami, yeah. which is, uh, if you know about it, it's like the fina financial, just, it's kind of yeah. like the, I don't you can't really compare it to another city, but it's the financial, it's the Wall Street of the South. It's yeah. like the financial districts where all the condos are, the skyline or whatever. Opened a gym there and it was kind of like my dream at that time. Yeah. And um, I was working with a supplement company that was sponsoring me and they were like, hey man, can we use this beautiful gym to do a photo shoot? I'm like, sure. You know, so. I'm seeing where this is going. Yeah, you're seeing it. <laughs> yeah. And um, the week before we officially uh, opened, like even it was before the soft opening, actually, we had this photo shoot. They asked me to be in it too. And um, I met her there. She was hired by the supplement company to, to be in the photo shoot. Okay. And we met there. We became friends, and uh, through you know, I network network with everyone, yeah, especially yeah. in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we just we stayed friends for for months and months, and stayed in contact. She would come to Miami. I'd be like, "You're in Miami, come to the gym." She, at the that time, was hook. that was his that hook. Was, that was oh, his yeah. hook. I'm gonna yo, I'm gonna get into this. All right, yeah. so so you're like, okay, you stayed in contact. You stayed as friends. All good. Like we've all had the stories of how we, you know, we try and, you know, welcome our significant others <laughs> into our lives. So. She never. Every time I tell this story, <laughs> yeah. She, what would she? What would you say? And then when I meet her, I would ask her. What every she time said. I tell this story, <laughs> I say I was trying to get bodies in the gym, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah, literally, <laughs> especially people that have influence and that are good looking yeah, yeah. and I was doing it from, from like a business side yeah, 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 yeah. and she's like but sure <laughs> sure you're yeah. you know yeah, yeah. you're trying to the, she call you Anthony or Tony she calls me to, uh, I can't, <laughs> yeah, when you're my, trouble, my parents are around and stuff like she's around my family she'll yeah. say Anthony but <laughs> she still calls me Tony but yeah that's how that's um that's how we met we met when I opened my gym and we had a photo shoot so okay. yeah and then you met there maintained a friendship and then right uh, at some point at some point uh the conversation got longer than <laughs> than networking yeah, yeah in my yeah. head i'm like she, she's dating some six foot seven baseball player for them <laughs> for whoever for yeah. milwaukee or something. i don't know <laughs> yeah. name a team that's what i thought and yeah. I, I didn't think she was into me at all yeah so when a little sign came out that I was like, the wait. The door open. Yeah. And I was like, wait, this isn't. Copy, yeah, I'll go for copy. What do you yeah. want? <laughs> so that's, um, yeah, that's how it started. We, you know, we started as friends and then. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, I've been, yeah, I saw in store, she can, she can barbecue in the wind. <laughs> oh, you saw that? <laughs> Obviously, I was filming that. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were. I was dying laughing. I just said, I said. <laughs> well, she was so proud of herself because she doesn't barbecue. She cooks. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and her brothers are like big barbecue <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah. So she was just impressed that she, that the steak came out so great. <laughs> Mind you, things are flying around and um, you guys would have to have watched her story to <laughs> understand. Yeah, but, exactly. It's kind yeah. of an inside thing. Yeah, it's inside us and <laughs> yeah, her, her following. Yeah, her following. 
So that that's awesome. So now, I mean, you find it better. You guys are traveling together, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so is it you? You said that you guys like to travel, then work out. What is it? What else do you guys look for in a destination when when kind of traveling together? I kind of kind of think about, hey, do we want to do an outdoorsy type of of do we want to do something culturally? So do we want to go Lux, which usually we're trying to do that Lux. Yeah. So whatever it is, um, in the most comfortable way possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, it just, we, we kind of yearly, like every year we'll say, maybe we should go back to Europe. Like, like we come up with like a little game plan and then we just start yeah, just let it naturally. Go. Let it yeah. Just whatever, you know, whatever kind of happens. So, um, yeah, we got some some plans this year, but we look, f- yeah, look for what's on tap. Where are you guys going this year? Hoping to do London, Paris again, uh, maybe like Portugal, Prague, something like that. A lot Portugal. of some some cool. Europe, you, you know, a lot of Europe. Yeah, we were also talking about Italy again, so I think we're going to go back to Europe this year. We nice. didn't go last year. Nice, very yeah. nice. So what, what's uh, so what's on store? What's next? So you, you've got a lot of momentum built around multiple different paths. Yeah. Um, what's next? What are you focusing on now? What's what's kind of what's on tap? We got we've got a lot of things in the works right now. Um, so the cigar thing has been going great. Okay. Right? So why don't you tell us about that? So I've I've done a lot of ambassadorship for cigar companies, um, cigar subscriptions, right? So that's just been developing and de- developing. And now some of the biggest brands now I've, I've been in talks with and we're working on right now a, a collab where a, a, a company is going to, a subscription company is going to, I'm going to curate their box. Oh, okay. That's so it'll cool. be like, I won't say the company name yet, but and Tony Carvajal. Hall. Yeah. And I, I'm going to go to the factories. I'm going to test out the, the smoke myself and go through the process and, and uh, put that together. And then hopefully down the line, Call start my cigar own. cigar boss. He's a cigar He's boss. Cigar there boss. you go. <laughs> We're bossing no matter what's going yeah, on. Exactly. Whatever it so is. So we got the cigar stuff going. That's going good. Fashion's been going great. Um, and um, Are you still doing a lot of training or are you just training yourself or like what's, what's going on with the fitness stuff that kind of started it all? Really the fitness stuff is mainly writing at this point. Okay. I have a few VIPs um, that I see when I can, or I give them programming to travel with, et cetera. But me physically being there is, uh, is really difficult. Yeah. You're always on an airplane as well. On a plane. Yeah. Um, Yeah, me physically, like me doing manual labor is not going to happen anymore. (laughs) So there are just some consulting stuff that's going on. And as far as like other gyms and helping them progress and and, um, move, you know, break plateaus. And then I have other people asking me that want to start new gyms. So um, I have the knowledge of it. I have the knowledge of the business. So I'm, I'm using that. Yeah. And then who knows, maybe, a, maybe a new facility coming up. There we go. Yeah. I, like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I have one, actually two more questions. So, you know, there's something that, you know, when you hear about, you know, trainers, uh, is it true that as a trainer that you know, like some of your clients would then hit on you as being their trainer? Yeah. You, say, you sometimes hear it's like the, you know, it's like the, 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 the wife and the trainer in here. There's always this stigma and I've always wanted to ask that question. So that's where. I mean, yeah. Not to say you act on it. We don't have to go there. No. There, I learned that lesson yeah. early in my career. Yeah. You know, I made the mistake. I never did it again. Yeah. I was like, if you walk into my gym, it's professional. It's professional, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had I've had clients admit to me in the past. <laughs> yes, nothing present, obviously. Very past, Not training, long again. time ago, ages ago, <laughs> uh, before the gray, that um, that they were like, yeah, I hired you just to try to <laughs> yeah, get close to you, and um, yeah, why don't we go out? You know. All right, there we go. That's what I, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know. Yeah, that. it's a thing. <laughs> it it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> A real professional trainer is not going to act on that. Period. Like once that that line's crossed, like once you become well, a client, there's no coming back. Yeah, there's no coming right. back. I mean, there really is not. No, no. I, I mean, a good trainer will once you officially become a client, you're yeah. always a client. Yeah, then that's and it. And that's it. Yeah. No, no, you know, no. It's no, like um, it's like your friends 
Like you might have known this girl, then your friend starts dating her, and it's yeah, like, it's I like, don't uh, even see yeah, you that sorry. way. Yeah, you're like, uh, uh-uh. it's like yeah. my big sister, my little sister, you know, like whatever. Exactly. You know, that that sort of the a professional trainer. <laughs> you, if you guys are listening, please <laughs> stick, stick to that rule. Don't take the bait. Don't, don't try. Don't try and sleep with the trainer. Don't trade. fold. Don't yeah, fold. Exactly. Stand. Stand strong. Stand, be strong, Male, man. Females, whoever you There's are. There's more people out there. Yeah, You'll exactly. be okay. The world is filled with a lot more guys and girls. You know. Um, all right. So if you were to give one tip to these listeners uh, going forward through 2020, what would the one tip be? Wow. Okay. I would say do inventory on who's around you. Okay. So checks and balances. Consistently be checking up on who you're interacting with what they're doing, what are they talking about? Because consumption is the key to success, in my opinion. I mean, there's many keys, but one of the, one thing that's overlooked a lot is what you're taking in is really going to make you who you are and what's going on and what direction you're going. Yeah. So audit your circle. You got to audit your circle. Oh man. Consistently auditing your circle. It's extremely important. Yeah. You you call me, you're complaining. (laughs) Oh Yeah. Hey, I got another call on the other line. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm the same way. I'm constantly auditing and you just, there's cues. And sometimes, you know, you get so into it and then you're like, take a step back. Or even if you're taking a day for yourself, you're like, why the hell am I even dealing with this shit? Yes. <laughs> you, know? you find yourself getting <clears throat> you get invested in. into something that has nothing so to do with you. Time suck. Right. Yeah. So, well, yeah, to me, that's a, a huge key and applies in so many ways. It, and audit what you're taking in. Yeah, you know? no, 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 makes sense. I was well, supposed to give one tip. So, yeah, that's so audit it. your one, crew. Audit one, your crew, audit, man. Audit, audit, audit those around you. Well, Tony, thank you so thank much. You. Glad we were able to meet. Can't wait till we uh, connect in Miami. Yes. Again, go to Cuba. We got to plan that trip. You I'm have to go to Miami, and then we're gonna go to Cuba. I'm all over there. And I'm gonna go see you. Go to Utah. Yeah, come, come out and visit anytime. Let me know. Great, all right. dude. Thank a you lot so of gratitude. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and you know your support always. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Cheers.